Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you and welcome. My name is Albert Pierce. I am the American Islam Emergency Relief Team Coordinator, and I'm excited to share with you all the myriad of training and experience I received in the military and across the 10 different states that I've lived in from north to south and in other countries of the world. One of the trainings that we would like to provide for you today is training on hurricane preparedness, which is essential for individuals that are living in coastal areas or individuals that are visiting coastal areas during hurricane season, which is from June to November and the peak months, August to September, going into October. <clears throat> so hurricanes are large tropical storms with sustained winds of 74 miles per hour or greater. That is when they become categorized as a hurricane. And you'll learn that they move in a counterclockwise fashion and can be devastating or deliver devastation. And more than 36 million people live in hurricane susceptible areas. <clears throat> so what is the recipe for a hurricane? Well, when you have warm waters and cool air, you will get evaporation. And when that moisture evaporates and rises, it will it will cause cloud formation. And when these clouds form, uh, you will start getting storms within the clouds. And as more of this moisture, this uh, warm moisture rises up into the air, the air is cool. It will cool the air down. The heat will transfer into the air. That cool air will then start moving into a counterclockwise fashion warming that air at the top that will create a uh, pressure differential which then will create more moisture to come from the bottom on up which then will cause the storm to grow bigger and put more air into the counterclockwise rotation and then as speeds pick up and gather and it gets larger <clears throat> you get the formation of a hurricane. And the strongest winds are going to be in the uh, top right coordinate of the direction of the uh, hurricane winds. So hurricanes are categorized one, two, three, four, and five. It is starting at approximately 74 miles per hour wind speed that a hurricane Will be categorized as one, a uh, category one hurricane. Anything below is uh, deemed a tropical storm. Nonetheless, still has potential danger. We are familiar with category twos and up when they usually initially hit landfall. And when they hit landfall, uh, they will begin to weaken still devastating. Hurricane get their names uh, by the World uh, Meteorological Organization and they earn their names uh, as it reaches a threshold of 39 miles per hour. You can go to the website below to learn more about the names and the, they have names already picked out for many years to come but a name will retire so they'll reuse names, but names will retire when it is costly in terms of lives and property. So like Katrina. There are two things, there are two uh, warning systems associated with hurricanes, a hurricane watch or a severe weather watch and a severe weather warning. So the hurricane watch or severe weather watch is when uh, hurricane conditions are possible within 36 hours. And you should be activating your family's action plan, which we will discuss uh, a little further on. <clears throat> a hurricane warning, when the governor issues a uh, hurricane warning or an, ev an evacuation warning, uh, winds of at least 74 miles per hour are expected within 24 hours or less. Finalize protection actions and move to the safest location for you during the storm. 
being prepared is staying alive. So know the vulnerability of your area to hurricane hazards. Know if you are in a high flood zone, if you're on the coastal area, uh, you are abutted against the water, uh, know what you will uh, be presented with as far as hazards. Have a family evacuation plan and routes and alternative routes chosen. Ensure your vehicle is in full operational order. That means having plenty of gas, it's filled up ahead of time, uh, air pressure, uh, the uh, air pressure in your tires are uh, optimal and that you have a spare that you know how to change one and that you have jumper cables, uh, first aid kit and that all of your belongings that you want to take with you will fit in the car and inshallah the individuals in there will also be comfortable. You want to maintain your documents, photos or other important items, whether you leave them at the house or take them with you. You want them to be in uh, waterproof uh, sleeves or bags or in something that is waterproof so they do not get damaged. Some of the known risks and hazards associated, associated with a hurricane include storm surge, inland flooding, high wind, and tornadoes. And we will discuss these. So a storm surge creates potential for loss of life. So a storm surge occurs when you already have uh, waves with energy and these waves are uh, breaking um, close to or at the point of uh, land. And now you have these high winds that are coming in with plenty of energy to transfer and give to uh, this water. And now the water is capable of making uh, landfall or coming inland. Um, it can increase water levels by 15 feet or more, which if you measure yourself at, you know, five foot, let's say one to six foot, you can imagine how high the water will rise in your given area if you are very close to where a storm surge can occur and they can occur quickly. So it's really important to not uh, wait, uh, but to be ahead of it and evacuate before one even reaches land. So you wanna minimize distance you must travel to safety, know your evacuation destination, shelter and route, know, know where you're gonna stay uh, and know your route uh, and try to get on the road early. So, it's yes, to do so promptly, you want to evacuate as soon as possible, which means being as prepared as possible. Maybe having the car already packed. Uh, let's say you were going to work that day and then you hear that there might be a warning given or you hear that there is uh, the uh, uh, speed or direction of the storm might hit landfall at a certain point. Maybe get off work early or right when you get off, have your car packed and ready to go. So if an order is given or you choose to leave before the order is given, you can uh, do so promptly and orderly and inshallah not have uh, a lot of traffic. So inland flooding is probably next to strong winds, one of the most common things to occur uh, during this type of um, storm. And this is where many deaths uh, can occur, not, not only, mostly through drowning. When someone tries to abandon their cars, they can get swept by the water. And whether you are an Olympic professional swimmer, uh, rushing waters can be very powerful. If you've ever gone White River rafting or even have been in areas where there is moving water, you will know uh, how powerful and strong they are. You also don't know, let's say it's waist deep as you're walking, there's a lot of dangers underneath there. There might be a hole, there might be an area where you step and then now you just go underwater, uh, as well as power lines and sharp objects or other objects that can damage you. So with this, uh, 
determine or know your vulnerability based on the elevation of your property and evaluate your insurance coverage. So just knowing uh, what type or how severe the flooding can get even on non-severe weather that come. Uh, yeah, so know your uh, flood prone areas and be cautious of streams and drainage because drainage areas can only drain so efficiently. And we know that uh, nature can deliver a very powerful punch. So cities try their best to prepare with uh, releasing water from dams or trying to increase the depth of some of these uh, channels uh, ahead of time. But they are oftentimes ineffectual when you have uh, a massive storm. And avoid driving into water. Yes, your vehicle can be somewhat buoyant. Also, you can flood your engine. Also, you don't know how deep an area is. <clears throat> you might, it might be shallow for a few feet and then instantly become uh, too deep for your vehicle to continue to go forward. Uh, as well as, again, you don't know what type of danger and debris are uh, below the water. And yes, water can be powerful enough to even take your uh, vehicle. And so stay clear of down power lines. Uh, always assume that there could be one in that water. Uh, so to always be cautious and don't go into the water if you don't have to. So high winds. So this is the next uh, most common thing is you're gonna get your property damage. Um, you are not safer in high rise buildings. They are especially uh, vulnerable and debris can become projectiles. That's why it's very important to board up properly as well as to secure any surrounding area. Um, Cause what is your property like a trash can can become a projectile towards your neighbors. And so you don't want to uh, think that you are becoming responsible uh, for damaging someone else's property or life. So when a hurricane warning has been issued, you need to prepare your home. So protect your windows by installing hurricane shutters or by securing with uh, five eighth inch plywood over the window, uh, window panels and reinforce your garage doors as well as uh, um, secure anything that is loose and could become a projectile. Walk your property and identify things that um, can become projectiles. Any uh, trees or uh, bushes that you have, especially trees, if there's any dead limbs or long hanging limbs, um, have them manicured well in advance. And if you have a tree that is dead, then have it removed because it will easily go through a uh, five eighth inch plywood window and it can become, um, it can impel you as you're trying to stay safe inside your house. Tornadoes can form during hurricanes. And one of the dangers of a tornado is that they are not predictable with uh, how quickly they can change paths. And also they can look like they're going away and quickly form again. So if you see a tornado, try to go in the opposite direction if it's possible. Uh, but inshallah, you would have already been evacuated um, before one has formed in that area. <clears throat> so you want to always be monitoring the weather station. Uh, in this case, a good one to monitor is the NOAA. And you should have a battery powered uh, radio. Now, one of your uh, best ways to stay uh, safe and alive is to have a disaster plan. You need to have a checklist uh, to help prepare not only your home or house, your car and your family, um, but to ensure that everything is done 
orderly and that you are not missing anything. And to discuss these uh, hazards and this family plan with the individuals that are in your family and even maybe practice. Make sure that everything can fit in your car um, and that when it's time that everybody is ready to go. Uh, and have plans for your pets. Those can be easily overlooked, uh, but make sure you have uh, plans for your pets and any special needs. And we'll cover some of the items uh, at the end of the slides. So family disaster plans that you can take a look online. There are plenty of sites that give you uh, plans that are already uh, drawn up that you can download, but the uh, redcross.org and fema.org uh, have great resources for um, already developed uh, disaster plans. And then you can modify them to fit your needs. <clears throat> so what to include in your checklist as well as your disaster kit? Some of the things is to make sure if you're going to stay put that you have plenty of water. Water for drinking, uh, water for drinking, uh, water for cooking, yes. Uh, if you choose to use a uh, camping style grill <clears throat> that is uh, butane or propane driven, um, or powered, uh, then you're gonna, you can have water. Like if you have a, um, if you have a bathtub, you can fill the bathtub ahead of time with water and to have a way to filter that water. Uh, if you're gonna choose to also use that for your drinking water. To have cash on hand, if you uh, even post a uh, disaster, um, sometimes uh, the, the um, electronic paying systems may not be up. Uh, there are some places that will may only receive cash only. Uh, they might charge more because it is a disaster. And so uh, they may only say cash only. And it's also a way that you will be able to have uh, funds, let's say for playing, paying for a place to stay if you haven't already paid ahead of time. Um, all your important documents are in order and that they're well protected, whether you leave some behind or take them with you and that they are in uh, packaging that is waterproof. Some of the things you might wanna take with you so they don't get damaged or lost is maybe your passports or birth certificates, social security cards, um, and any kind of uh, insurance documents or appraisal documents um, or deeds or whatnot that um, are critical and that you want to keep for yourself. Medication and medical devices. You want to make sure that uh, if you are in an area that is gonna get hit hard, that uh, if it's possible to secure, um, they say uh, up to two weeks worth of um, extra medication if you are gonna get to the point of running out. If you can get more then uh, depending on how severe they believe the storm's gonna be, then try to uh, get that. Your flashlights and your batteries, always make sure you have extra batteries of all types, the AAA, AA, and let's say what, Ds and Cs, um, if you have things that still run on those. Um, yes, your battery operated a lot of things. If you can do solar power, um, there are some that will charge, uh, even if it's cloudy, uh, there might be enough light to get some charge uh, out of those things. Um, blankets and pillows, enough food for your family, and it says approximately one gallon per person per day. That's a lot. So it's definitely critical that you are prepared ahead of time and don't get caught in that purchasing frenzy um, to where you can go to the store and end up not be able to find uh, what it is that you need. Well, thank you in joining me for this relief training. And I really hope that uh, you were able to gain some information out of it. And now we'll be a little more well prepared for uh, any um, se severe storm that may come your way. Thank you.